Joining me now is Scott Petzl. He's president of Metallic Minerals. Great to see you. Great to be here. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, your uh, La Plata project, which is uh, polymetallic. It's in Colorado. Uh, and you say it's got very similar geology to Galore Creek. You're very familiar with that, along with your CEO, because you were at Nova Gold when you had a successful exit there. So uh, can you give us a little snapshot? Yeah, well, our CEO and myself, we were part of the co-founding team of Nova Gold, and we did indeed have a great exit from Nova Gold. We were able to take Nova Gold from a $25 million market cap to over a billion dollar valuation in about 10 years. And one of the key drivers of that, that story was our Galore Creek project, which I was the exploration manager on. The La Plata project was brought to us in 2019 by some underlying vendors that recognized the work we had done at uh, Nova Gold and on the Galore Creek project and recognized that not only could we bring value to our shareholders, but that these deposits were very similar in style. They're both alkalic mineral, uh, alkalic porphyry systems. Uh, our La Plata project in Southwest Colorado now has a 1.2 billion pound copper resource and a 17 million ounce silver resource. Galore Creek's closer to 10 billion pounds of copper and 250 million ounces of silver and uh, you know other 11, 12 million ounces of gold. We actually think we can get there with our La Plata project over time. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have a similar system, we've got a great extent to the footprint of the deposit and the ability to make new discoveries and grow resources. Now you've got uh, five of the 55, you've identified five of the 55 critical minerals on the US critical minerals list. And the US government has designated uh, your uh, La Plata, the, the district, as a critical mineral resource area. So uh, what do you think the potential is there and what's the significance of the government saying that? Well, I think, you know, I think the idea that uh, copper and silver added to the USGS list of critical minerals this year is, is really significant to us. But the one thing that we saw is out of the bipartisan infrastructure law that was created uh, a few years back and the establishment of the Earth MRI program, which dedicated efforts by the US, USGS or US Geological Survey to look for critical mineral potential areas and to put money into those areas to help identify critical mineral potential. Well, over $300,000 has been spent in the La Plata Mountains where our project is at to assist in that effort, including geophysics and mapping and soil sampling. And we've parlayed that information, looking back at the data that we've collected to identify not only the resource of copper and silver that we currently have, but gold, uh, which, which I understand is not necessarily critical, but gold, platinum, and palladium that are gonna be added to a resource update here in the very near, near term, Q4 likely. In addition to that, because of the work by the USGS and the Colorado Geological Survey in the La Platas, We've also gone back and looked at our data and said there is potential byproduct, scandium, gallium, vanadium, and tellurium that co-locate with copper and silver in the deposit. Also the potential for rare earth elements, lanthanum, and yttrium. And it's very early stage for us to say, well, this is gonna be you know, an economic con contributor or part of a future resource. Mm -hmm. But the potential is there and uh, in this time when there's such focus on domestic sourcing of critical minerals that to have this basket of minerals that we can explore for and and uh, and build up is really a value to our company and the project. That's really interesting. So it, it could get much bigger and more diverse with different different minerals and so on. Um, so Newmont's a strategic investor. Your team is working with Newmont for follow up drilling, uh, but also there yeah, there's some similarities as well. La Plata to Cadia in in Australia. Is that correct? There is. Yeah. And, and let's just step back a little bit. So we drilled a hole that was one of the best holes in North America in 2022. It was 816 meters of 0.41% uh, copper equivalent from surface that ended in extremely high grade material over the last 30 meters. We announced those results in February of 2023. Uh, the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada Convention was two weeks later and Newcrest was very interested in those results. And we visited with them many times over the course of that convention. By the end of the week, we had a term sheet. 
they were so interested in the La Plata project because of their experience in mining Cadia and seeing the similarities between the two. The, the challenge or, you know, the, the difference is now that Newmont, two months after we'd made the deal with Newcrest, took over Newcrest. Right. And, uh, and so now we're dealing with Newmont, but a lot of those Newcrest people have made it through the door and are representing the copper gold team within Newmont and they're still championing the project, but they stress the similarities between the lineaments or the, the underdeveloped nature of the deposit when they first discovered it. And the fact that our project has 10 undrilled porphyry targets that have not been tested. Uh, and they wish that they could go back and actually have drilled Ridgeway yeah. as the first thing before they uh, worked on the Cadia and the other, other deposits in the, in the Cadia system. Okay. So big scale, we actually have twice the footprint uh, uh, of alteration associated with the intrusions that they have at Cadia at our La Plata project. A lot of similarities. It's driven interest by Newcrest, now Newmont, and we're continuing to work with them on developing those plans, as you say. Uh, really interesting. Now, the company also owns uh, Kino Silver in Yukon. And so are you learning anything from Hecla, who's a neighbor, and they're they're working on uh, Kino Hill? Yeah, they're still working towards real commercial production at, at their Kino Silver operations. Uh, they have recently uh, mined between three and five million ounces of silver over the last couple of years. They've called it a core asset. It's a great asset for them. Their previous or predecessor company, Alexco, which they took over a couple of years ago, uh, we've had a long relationship with them and now Hecla. And the one thing that I would say we really have taken away from the work that they've done is in the historical parlance, these deposits were very surficial and limited to a, a vertical extent of around 200 meters. But the drilling that Alexco has done and now Hecla has done is we're finding those deposits can run as deep as 1500 meters. It really opens up the potential of the district when you think about the fact that we've got an 18.2 million ounce starter resource, all contained within 200 meters of the surface, you can envision what we might be able to do if we can extend those resources down a kilometer and a half. Mm -hmm. Lastly, to wrap everything up with a bow here, Scott, uh, the company raised $8 million recently. You've got Eric Sprout in there as an investor. So how would you summarize your thoughts in terms of the investment case for uh, investors? Everybody's looking for ideas. You want to stand out. So what, what is the, the case? Well, I think the, the idea that um, Newmont is basically validating our La Plata project with their strategic investment and the 9.5% ownership of our company, this project really has scale potential and quality potential, grade and size. And it is in southwestern Colorado with this basket of critical minerals that really addresses a lot of these supply chain issues and national defense in interests as a really key flagship project for us. In addition, we have the optionality of our Kino Silver project, which is silver lead zinc in a historic silver producing district next door to a producing operator in the highest grade silver district in Canada. And those two properties alone are essentially company makers. And in addition to that, something that's unique to the junior space is we have alluvial gold royalty production out of the historic Klondike district in the Yukon. Oh, okay. And we're producing, uh, you know, revenues around three years straight now of revenue production from royalty alluvial gold production. And, um, you know, we're, make, we're offsetting GNA costs and hopefully expanding these operations to uh, include supplementing our exploration work. So. It's a unique story that way. Very good, Scott. Thanks for the update. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, Scott Petzl of Metallic Minerals.